Auto Park for Vision Only Cars is finally here and has some big improvements compared to the old Auto Park, which used the ultrasonic sensors, like being able to select any parking spot you want just by touching it, which you can see on the visualizations on the bottom of the screen. Now, I gotta be honest with you. When I first tried this new Auto Park, I was not very impressed. Although it's supposedly trained with an end-to-end -end AI architecture like full self-driving version 12 is, it can feel really slow and robotic at times. And honestly, it was hard for me to believe this was trained on an end-to-end -end system based off some of the behavior I was seeing. The head of the autopilot team did mention it would get faster in future releases, but I was also seeing some things like it correcting when it really didn't need to. Like right now where you can see it start to move forward, even though it originally was backing into the spot perfectly. My first few experiences really made me wonder how much I'd actually use this in the real world compared to just doing it myself, which would probably be a lot faster, at least for now. But the good news is, once I really started pushing the system to the limits, it really, really impressed me, and I can't wait to show you some examples. Before we take a look at those, though, let's go over a few of the quirks I've noticed while using it. The first one surprised me a bit, which is that the sounds the car typically makes when it's getting close to other objects has been completely removed while Auto Park is active. It is silent the entire time, as you might be able to hear, or not hear, I guess, from the internal audio, the only sound it makes is when it shifts gears. I can imagine this was done on purpose to not alarm the occupants inside the car because as we're going to see a few examples ahead, there are times where it's forced to get extremely close to other cars and objects and it would just make the experience that much more stressful if it was dinging at you to stop all of the time. Something else that genuinely surprised me was when I went into this brand new parking lot, which has no parking space lines on the ground at all, and selectable parking spots were still showing up on the visualizations. It seems to even be able to space them out according to how many cars can fit there, even when there's no lines to give it guidance at all, which is really awesome and works most of the time. You may have noticed some of the selectable parking spots on the right hand side there were a bit crooked, so I selected one to see what would happen, and interestingly, after you select a spot and hit start, it no longer updates, and the car will attempt to fit exactly into the blue box you selected, which in this case is crooked, and it won't update even when it sees new information. You can see the visualization clearly shows it crooked, and the car is a little bit crooked in real life as well, but it doesn't seem to care that much and just stops exactly in the center of the blue box. Those selectable spots and non-painted areas don't show up all the time though. In this case, I figured it would definitely show them, as there's other cars to our left to give it guidance on where to park. And even as we approach these empty spots to our left, so that the car should have plenty of context to know that it should park there, the parking spots don't show up. And the same thing happening here where there are a few spots off to our right where the car should have plenty of room to park into and older versions of Auto Park might have actually been able to park in these spaces, but the Vision Only one does not seem like it wants to. Another area you might expect selectable spots to show up is in these pull-in spaces where you have to go in nose first, but since it can only currently back into spaces, none of these spots are selectable even though it can clearly see the lane lines. I do hope that in future versions, the car is able to pull forward into these spots instead of just reverse, which could be useful when you're going shopping and need to access the back of your car, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. And while older versions of Auto Park that use ultrasonics used to prioritize being centered between two vehicles, this one tries to get centered between the lines almost no matter what. As we start backing up here, you're gonna see a black Model 3 to our left who's not very centered in his parking spot. He's pretty far over to the right, but the car doesn't seem to take this into account and backs up really close to him. There's probably not even enough room here for me to open my door to get out of the car. So definitely keep an eye out on on that when you're using this version of Auto Park. Another area where it's different from the older version is that it no longer needs two cars to parallel park between and can park in front or back of a single car like you're seeing it do right now, but rather interestingly, it kind of still treats it as if it's fitting between two cars anyways. And it takes, in my opinion, the more difficult approach. And instead of just pulling up to the curb and reversing like I do, it backs towards the curb at a big angle as if it's trying to avoid a ghost car parked there or something. So 
hopefully in the future this is something that can be improved so it moves off the road and out of the way of traffic as soon as possible instead of doing this. But hey, it's hard to argue with the results. We are parked straighter and closer to the curb than the car behind us, which in my testing has been very consistent. And sometimes you can even make it park into really weird spots like behind this big dumpster here. Now, since it can't go beyond the spot and back in like it always wants to do with every other parallel parking spot, it is going to be forced to try something else, which does result in some pretty quirky behavior. You can see it reversed a little bit and then kind of changed its mind and it's going forward again and gets very, very close to this dumpster here, uncomfortably close before finally backing well beyond the spot to nose in. And it is behavior like this where it's constantly having to decide what to do and update its path as you can kind of see by those blue lines that it's projecting that did convince me that this probably is an end-to-end -end architecture. Although painfully slow sometimes, it did manage to get to every single parking spot I selected no matter the difficulty, as you're going to see here in a second, but yeah, definitely a lot slower than I would like. I think it's losing the most amount of time during gear changes, like where it's stopping the car and shifting to reverse, it just takes a really long time for it to start getting moving again, and I think if they just fix that, the entire experience would feel a lot more natural, but I mean, it is pretty tough to argue with the results. A perfect parking job, again, as long as you have a little bit of patience. Sometimes it kind of needs to be tricked into fitting into a spot. Like I wanted to select this last spot at the edge and you can see it kind of appearing and disappearing and I had to be really quick to select it and hit start. But once you hit start, it follows through always. Rolling through a stop sign here, don't tell the NHTSA please, and I was wondering how it was going to handle this curb off to our right. Because if it turns the wheel like it's displaying the visualizations, it probably would have hit it. But as you can see, as it starts to reverse, it actually straightens itself out before turning the steering wheel all the way avoiding the curb. Very, very impressive. Now it can't make this in one move, so it does have to make kind of a three point turn here, which again, this is the slowest part of the entire parking procedure is when it's stopping and shifting gears and just taking a really long time to do so. It actually does make one more correction after this, but I don't blame it. I'm gonna switch to the left camera here and you can see just how close our wheel is getting to the curb here. We are probably within about an inch. This spot is deceivingly small, which is why I chose it. And you can see it's trying its absolute hardest to fit in between the curb and the painted line on the ground, which it's doing a fairly good job at. It is backing down the curb with maybe two inches to spare and fit right in between the lines as well. Pretty impressive stuff. Another really tight spot off to our right that I really didn't think the car was going to be able to fit into at all. And originally, it wasn't even giving me the option to park there, but I did manage to select it quickly and hit start, and it actually tried it. To be honest with you, this is not a spot that I would attempt myself. I took one look at this and did not think the car would have tried it, and I fully expected it to give up at some point while attempting this. You can see just how little room there is to maneuver in between these two cars. And even more scary, it seems like the car is closer to the one in the rear than it's even showing on the visualizations. We are maybe two inches away, max. And despite giving my wife and I mild heart attacks sitting in the car here, we did let it try to do its thing and kind of Austin powers its way into this parking spot. And even without a camera on the front bumper, it seems to be willing to get really close to things in the front. And even though it's still showing itself a little bit crooked in the visualizations, this is where it finally gives up. Seems kind of funny to me that it did the hardest parts and gave up in the easy part, but yeah, this is where it stopped. Overall, I gotta say, I've been very impressed with this new version of Auto Park. It is a bit slow right now, and I probably won't be using it for basic parking situations until it's a little faster, but for more difficult spaces and parallel parking, it does a fantastic job. Most of the time, it parks straighter and closer to the curb than any of the other cars around, even in some more challenging situations like this one where the curb isn't completely straight. 
and it does occasionally get uncomfortably close to curbs like you're seeing it do right now like seriously this is within an inch but so far i haven't seen a single example posted online of it actually touching a curb yet so it must know what it's doing all in all this is a pretty promising start for ai auto park and it's been a lot of fun testing this out and seeing the ai work in real time by adjusting its path to fit into the spots but something even more fun and valuable is learning how ai actually works which you can do at brilliant Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a platform where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI with a focus on the actual doing part. Instead of watching a video online, you go through interactive lessons, which have been shown to be about six times more effective than watching lecture videos, which is something I can attest to. The lessons break down complicated subjects, like how large language models work into digestible pieces, letting you work at your own pace with the ability to customize the content to fit your needs. It kind of gamifies learning in a way and builds up your problem solving skills, which make you a better thinker in general. So if you're ready to try a better way to learn and develop a powerful daily learning habit, you can get everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days by using the special link in the description, which will also give you 20% off the annual premium subscription. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and until next time, everybody. Bye.